thanks again everybody for joining. I still see some people coming in and coming out. So while peace is getting set up, it will get those couple of people a chance to get settled as well. Okay, let me start. Thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Peace Lee, working at Hyundai Motor Company. Uh, in this talk, I'm going to introduce Guider, Unified Runtime Performance Analyzer, and explain how to trace Linux system using it. This is a summary for my talk. First, talking about diverse performance tools and problems in Python. Next, introducing Guider and its useful features and explaining how to trace Linux system. Uh, finally, showing the demo about Guider features. To analyze performance, logging and using tools are most effective ways. Logging is very useful for recording specific information, but understanding log requires domain specific knowledge. So, system level engineers and new members are difficult to understand them uh, usually. In addition, adding new logs requires source code and tool chain for rebuild. It's very boring and time consuming jobs. It's also difficult to record and analyze too many logs because of the limitation for memory and time. So we prefer to use performance tools. It's very comfortable and effective to analyze performance at system level. Some nice tools doesn't even require rebuilding target program, uh, installing itself with dependent packages, uh, target task. But sometimes too many tools confuse us, determining the right tool from a variety of performance issues is not easy. Moreover, the results of a single tool are not enough, so it's common to use multiple tools to summarize, and reprocess, and analyze the results. However, not all tools are easy to install and use, since uh, there are many requirements such as kernel configuration uh, package, uh, build and re-execution, the order of the system, the more difficult it is to use. Uh, the same goes for visualization. So I decided to make a new performance tool that can analyze all platform vectors easily on all systems, including very old ones. Uh, but there were immediate difficulties and I ended up choosing Python finally for the following reasons. Uh, there were many things to be implemented, but Python has uh, productive expressions and data types. It was difficult to learn new language, but Python is very easy to use for beginners. And there were needs for many packages, but Python has many useful built-in packages and powerful visualization uh, packages. It's very interesting. There were needs for performance and compatibility, but Python provides attractive binding features to C, C++ libraries. So I don't need to implement all, just link some things in standard libraries by using C ties similar to DLOpen. By using Python, I have been making Guider Unified Runtime Performance Analyzer. Uh, it can monitor, profile, trace, visualize various performance vectors. Uh, monitoring features provide continuous performance tests every interval in real time. Uh, profiling features provide a statistic overview of corrective data during a specific interval. And tracing features provide specific data on the execution of your task in form of logs. Uh, Guide is a kind of CLI tool, so it offers a lot of features by the combination of commands and uh, options. But in this talk, I explain only some useful features and tracing features about it because of time limitation. Uh, it's open source program and written in Python it doesn't require installation, but PIP and Open Embedded also support it for convenience. Uh, actually, just executing guide.py file is enough for use. Guider mm -hmm. never use external binaries such like executable programs, non-standard libraries, Python packages, except for 
map plot lib for some kinds of visualization features. Most of guider features are implemented directly using uh, standard libraries such like libc. That's the reason why guider uh, doesn't require any rebuilt install configuration. Uh, in addition, it can be applied with only one megabyte of storage space. Uh, these characteristics are very attractive in embedded system, especially. Uh, all features of Guider are supported in Linux and Android, and it also provides some limited features on macOS and Windows. Uh, so from now, let me introduce some curing features of Guider. First one is monitoring system resources in real time. This feature works by periodically updating states for system resources and events. System resources are about CPU, memory, swap, block, network, storage. As shown in the picture, in the first plot, system resource information is shown on the top line, such as the number of cores, RAM, swap, and additional system information such as context switching, interrupt, running task, memory zone, and performance tests using PMU are also printed. In the second part, important system level resources and events are printed. System states such as CPU uses, available memory, swap uses, memory recurring, Block IO, network IO are most precious information for performance analysis. In addition, uh, proper usages are also printed. Although not shown in the picture, governor uh, clock temperature for each core can be shown together using specific options. Uh, in the third part, storage information about busy or cloud available space is shown for each device. Heavy storage workload can cause serious performance degradation. That's the reason why we track those stats. In the upper part of the picture, network information about inbound and outbound is shown for each device. In the lower part of the picture, not only uh, system resources, but also task resources are shown in their, with their attributes in real time. It's a little bit similar to Linux top command. Use this for CPU, uh, memory, including virtual, physical share, and swap, block IO, and memory details are printed well. Uh, the shown tasks are sorted by CPU uses by default, but you can change the sort order using the sort option. The task filter is also available to show only specific tasks. Native function calls can be monitored for a specific task in real time. In addition, tests about uh, function calls are also printed, such as average, minimum, maximum. At this picture, all function calls are shown with backtrace. Uh, that usage is not about CPU, uh, it's the proportion for the total function calls. So this function, this feature is useful when finding frequent calls or measuring specific function call count, including backtrace. And there is another function monitoring feature to measure CPU intensive calls by sampling techniques. The filter option for both task and function is also supported. All of these calls, including backtrace, can be also monitored for a specific task in real time. In addition, Cisco states are also shown, such as a last elapsed time or error return together. This feature is very useful when finding Cisco that take a long time, uh, measuring specific Cisco count and checking Cisco error returns. The filter option for both task and uh, function is also available. All opened files on uh, sockets. Uh, pipes can be monitored for each process in real time. Uh, files are printed with positions and open flags. Uh, TCP and UDP sockets are printed with binding and connection status. Uh, Unix domain sockets are also printed with the file pass. Uh, 
this kind of information is very efficient to end debugging issues or performance tracing. The filter option for process and file is also available. Uh, by using the file filter, monitoring all processes that open specific files or bind in specific sockets is uh, possible. Previous monitoring features are for checking current status, but if someone wants to see a summary of system changes for a long time, the profiling features can be good solutions. As shown in the picture in the top table, changes for system resources and events are printed for each, each interval. CPU use the uh, available memory, block IO, swap uses, memory recurrent size, uh, running task, network use is uh, summarized in each line for each interval. Because of screen length limitations, some fields were truncated in the picture. Uh, in the middle table, changes for storage uses are printed with a uh, total summary. As shown in the storage info table, there was no storage operation in the profiling time, a busy uh, workload size, a barrel of space are summarized in each time interval for each device. In the bottom table, changes for network uses are printed with total summary with the red box. Workload for inbound and outbound is summarized in for each interval for each device also. Next profile features are for tasks. In the first table, changes for per-process CPU uses as sh are shown in task attributes and uh, total summary for each interval. Total summary information in the red box represents CPU usages such as minimum, uh, average, maximum, and total for each task and full system. In the second table, uh, changes for per-process virtual memory uses are printed with task attributes and Total summary for each interval. The overall format is similar to the CPU table above. Although not shown in this picture, various types of tables are referred to together, such like scheduling delay, um, physical memory, block IO, uh, SIGRAB uses. Uh, by using these features, measuring and comparing resource usages are possible for many test cases. Uh, Text-based analysis is uh, specific but uh, less readable. That's why Guido provides visualization features in SVG format. Uh, using the SVG format output in your web browser, it provides an easy-to-view and responsive interface. Uh, first visualization feature is of a resource graph. As shown in the picture, uh, the top box shows graphs of CPU usage for running processes. The box on the right side is the rather list for those CPU graphs. The middle box shows graphs of block and network IO for the whole system. And the bottom box shows graphs of memory for the whole system. Of course, process graphs about block, network, or memory resources are also available. In addition, filter option for all of them is supported. Uh, as you can, this visualization feature makes it easy to understand big data corrected for a long time. And it also helps to understand trends in resource uses. This is also good for communication with other people. Uh, next visualization feature is about scheduling. Uh, the scheduling data is very large and very difficult to analyze one by one. Therefore, as shown in the picture, scheduling data such as time slice, uh, preemption, and blocking should be visualized prior to detailed analysis. Uh, using the SVG format output in your web browser, you can view details for time slices. It's very effective for analyzing multi-threaded programs, and interactive services, and delayed tasks, core utilization, in addition, this feature also allows for scheduling events as well as other custom events having timestamps to uh, for start and end. 
it's some kind of simple kernel chart in SVG format. And last visualization feature is about course text. Uh, analyzing only last called functions without full backtrace is difficult because standard functions such like read and write can be called by any other functions. Above all, in most cases, last called functions will not uh, cause all the problems. The problem is likely some other functions that called those last functions. Uh, therefore, to analyze fun uh, performance problems in function level, we need to able to see the whole encoding uh, each backtrace. In this case, uh, the frame graph feature is very useful to analyze core stack based profiling result for CPU uses, and blocking status, and memory leak, uh, syscall trigger, and function call. As shown in the picture, last functions at the bottom of each core stack are various, so we need to analyze all four functions that contain them. I guess modifying those functions will improve your application or service performance actually. Opening the SVG format output in your web browser, highlighting, uh, zooming, uh, searching specific functions or core stacks are also available using mouse and keyboard. So for, uh, I have introduced some useful features of Guider from now on. I would like to explain tracing features. Because of time limitation, I'm going to explain tracing features only for function, uh, syscore, signal, and IO. The target of function tracing is divided into three kinds of things. The first, nat native calls such as C, Rust, and Go. Uh, second, the compiled function calls such as Java and Node.js. And last, Python calls using interpreter. Signal tracing is about signals delivered to the target task. And IO tracing is about IO operations at various levels such like device and task and file. Tracing, feature, tracing target is divided into program and task. Program is just a binary not yet executed from storage. So guider can execute the target program at which point tracing begins from loader. Task is a running thread. Guider does not require a restart of the running task for tracing. Instead, it attaches to the target thread directly uh, using the trace. Tracing commands are various. If you want to see detailed commands and options, please refer to guide or help. So, the first tracing feature is for native functions such as C, C++, Rust core. Native function tracing is started by uh, bitrace command. The command is implemented using breakpoint called trap breakpoints for all symbol addresses from ERF or, and dwarf sections are injected to the target task, task's virtual memory by Guider itself. So Guider can detect events for function call and return from the target task by bitrace. And Guider can even read and manipulate registers, registers and memory for the target task when call and return event occur. As shown in the picture, call states are shown in various steps for Go program in real time. Arguments and uh, binary name for each function are also printed together in a line. The G option in the command line is task filter. That means all tasks have some, uh, including Go, will be targets for function tracing. The H option means printing backtraces. Uh, if there was no H option in the command line, just all function calls are printed without um, depth in them. Function filter is also available with the C option to trace only specific functions. The C option su uh, supports specific characters such like asterisk for inclusion, for circumflex for exclusion. 
using the H option, all back traces are also printed in every function code. As I already mentioned, guider can read and manipulate registers and memory for the target task at the time of each event. In addition, uh, various features such like task control, injection for Python code, and external binary, uh, remote call are also available using call command. As shown in the picture on the right side, uh, many call commands are supported to handle specific function call events. Let me explain some core commands. Uh, execute, execute external commands when function called. Uh, filter, print context if only specific conditions are met. Um, get org, print specific argument value. Set org, uh, manipulate uh, specific argument value. Get org, get return, uh, print return value and elapsed time when uh, function returned. Uh, PY file execute specific Python script remotely. Uh, read man uh, print specific memory value and write man manipulate specific uh, memory value. Uh, slip hold target and wait for specific uh, seconds. Syscall call specific syscall remotely. And user call call specific native call remotely. These kind of call commands are very useful when analyzing more deeply and testing. Uh, it's, it's about how to use core commands. Core commands are appended to the function filter with vertical bar in the C option. The command line at the picture means uh, first start tracing only write function from yes program. Uh, as you know, yes is just Linux command that print arguments value infinitely. So yes command will print A, B, C, D string repeatedly. And the print function is implemented inside the yes program using uh, the write function in uh, read C. Next, when the write function is called, print the memory value printed to uh, by the first argument with backtrace. Uh, argument number starts from zero in guider. Therefore, function argument for the write function is specific memory address that points to the value ABCD to be written. I guess the yes, yes command is implemented using buffer write uh, because multiple ABCD strings are written at once by the write function call. Uh, the previous function, uh, previous native function tracing features uh, for the, uh, yeah, just native functions. But how about programs written in JIT compiled languages such like Java and JavaScript? Uh, it's possible to get symbol mapping information about them using only ELF tables. But uh, if the target task provides guider with JIT compiled symbol address mapping information and JIT compiled function calls follows uh, uh, procedure calling convention, it's possible to trace them. So Java and Node.js can export symbol address mapping table using external file at one time. Then Guider can trace the uh, JIT compiled function calls after importing the mapping table. Like this, this is a tracing example about Node.js. Uh, as shown in the picture, there are uh, JIT symbols in red boxes and native symbols outside. Uh, function filtering for JIT symbols is also supported. The next feature is about Python function. Uh, Python function tracing is started by PY trace command. The command will print all Python method calls. As shown in the picture, Python calls stacks are printed in real time at various steps that depending on the stack frame, uh, file pass and line number for the each function are also printed together. The target was IOTA program that written in Python and prints uh, IO uses every second in real time. 
call comments used in previous native function tracing are also available through this feature. Uh, next tracing feature is for syscall. Syscall tracing is started by S trace command, similar to original Linux command S trace. The command will print all these calls and their arguments converted into an easy to understand format. As shown in the picture, these calls are printed with backtrace, return value, and lapsed time in real time. Call commands used in previous native function tracing are also available for this feature. And these calls can be printed with backtrace, including zip compiled symbols like this. Uh, zip compiled uh, symbols are shown in red boxes. Using this feature, uh, it's easy to analyze how long these calls are taking and which zip compiled function calls those these calls. As shown in the picture with the specific options such as Q option and uh, PI stack value, Python stacks related to each Cisco are printed. This feature is very useful when analyzing specific Python server program for tuning. For example, there is a low throughput server program written in Python and I'm going to improve performance of it. Uh, first of all, I can check the size argument for uh, each Cisco so it's like receive and send, and increasing them if they are not enough. Finally, I'm verifying results for a bigger bandwidth. During this process, if I cannot understand the server program deeply, including code, uh, it would be very difficult to change it. But if I already know which point should be changed, uh, such like Python functions calling network syscalls. This feature is good for these uh, cases. And next tracing feature is for signal. Uh, signal tracing is started by uh, SigTrace command. The command will print all received signals for the target task. In addition, the cause of the signal generation and the and sender can be also printed when are receiving SIG segue or SIG chart. As shown in the picture, received signals are printed for target threads and real time. And those threads were terminate, uh, terminated because of segmentation fault caused by wrong memory access. The options for backtrace and signal filter are also available for this feature. Using backtrace, you can analyze which function is being executed when the target task receives signals. Uh, this feature is useful when monitoring multiple tasks to analyze abnormal terminations such as uh, segmentation fault. Uh, last tracing feature is about IO. Uh, IO tracing means analyzing which task performed which operations on which files on uh, which devices and uh, at what size. Uh, it's not only for specific tasks, but also all tasks, whole system. So it must be possible to collect all system IO events, including various metadata such like task, uh, device, inode, and workload information. The, the I.O. tracing consists of three steps. Uh, first, recording all system I.O. events using F-trace. Uh, second, uh, processing recorded data, including uh, inode conversion. Uh, last, summarizing and reporting result. In the command line, uh, I.O. rec command is for recording system I.O. events into a specific file. Uh, report command is for processing data and reporting to a specific output file. Uh, as shown in the picture, uh, first report information is about uh, task workload in the red box on the right side of the picture. Uh, block workloads uh, are shown in a lot of time for read and write, the size in megabyte, and operation count this for each task. Uh, not only workload, but also a lapse of time is also printed. Uh, it's very useful I, uh, to analyze delay caused by IO system wider.
the cached IO is uh, excluded, excluded in this test because this is an actual block operation. So some operations using page caches are not measurable. Text report information in IO tracing is about device workload by size. In the red box on the picture, it shows the workload of each device for the read operation of all tasks and uh, proportion of our sequential operation. Uh, most read operations are, consist of 4K workload. In the uh, blue box on the picture, about 57% uh, of operations were sequential. In other, hand, in other ones, words, uh, about 43% of operations were random IO. This information is useful when optimizing uh, device workload, including kernel reader head. And of course, not only total workload, but also per task workload is also shown at the bottom of the picture. Next, uh, next report, default information in IO tracing is about file workload. Uh, in the red box on the picture, it shows the workload of each file for the write operation of all tasks. Uh, most write operations, about 100 megabytes, are performed into the uh, test file. Actually, it's all about guider thread using IO test command. This information is useful when uh, tracing or analyzing task workload or file workload. Especially, it's very nice for old systems cannot uh, use DPF. Text report information in IO tracing is about file operations. Uh, as shown in the picture, all read file operations are printed including time, and task, offset, size, and path. The total file size is also appended into the, the end of the file, file test in each line. as detailed information, but analyzing is a little bit difficult. So let me show demo about guider features finally. I can see it here and you have it paused, I think. It's starting yeah. again. So for okay. everybody else, you should be able to see the YouTube player instead of the presentation and the command lines being started in the demo. Go ahead, please. Okay, uh, first of all, let's install Guider using uh, PIP. Then check version of Guider. and check the commands using help command. Yeah, so there are many commands supported. I use the old then for performance analysis. So if you use each option with any command, options and examples for each command will be shown like this. Yeah, too many options. Only for top command. So let's let uh, let's execute the yes program. Let's just print the input string repeatedly.
then uh, execute it in background with uh, redirection. Then it will be our target task. And let's monitor system resources with the top command. Yes, process is using CPU much, and it is also uh, running on this core now. And there are many other states as shown in real time. It's very similar to uh, top command. And next, let's profile system and tasks for 10 seconds. Open the output file of Guider. Yeah, there is system information on the top of the file. System resource uses in each interval for 10 seconds, like this. CPU usage for whole system and uh, specific processes, including yes, is shown like this. In addition, virtual memory and physical memory RSS and memory details are also shown. And this is about uh, detailed stats for each interval. For 10 seconds, yeah. And next, uh, let's monitor syscalls with cost text. running yes task in background. Yeah. Only white syscalls are being used like this. And this is the user level cost tag calling the white syscall. Next, um, let's monitor function functions using CPU by sampling techniques. It looks similar to previous Cisco cost tech. And next, uh, let's trace Cisco with arguments and cost text. This is why, um, yeah, this is for those comments. This is right as this course and its arguments, return value, and elapsed time.
Uh, next, uh, let's trace functions with arguments and cost text. Just call white since calls. Some anonymous functions. Now, read the memory value pointed by first argument for the right function. This is core command, read the core command. This is the address, and the value is shown like this. The next feature is uh, visualization. This is performance graph showing system resources, resource uses of a CPU, a memory, I.O. This part shows CPU uses for whole system and processes. Now this is about CPU, total CPU and CPU usage for other processes. Um, yeah, this is levels for each graph. Next one is, yeah, this part is about IO, but there is no graph because profiling options were not enough. Uh, this part is um, shows memory usage for the full system. Next one is timeline chart showing scheduling time slices for all tasks. It's very similar to uh, commercial. So each each number shown on the left is the CPU core number. And time slices of running tasks in each core are also shown. So if you move the mouse pointer over a specific time slice, information about task, event, and time is printed. Okay, let's skip. Last one is frame graph for course text. Uh, if you create a specific uh, function box, zoom in is performed. And yeah, like this. Uh, if you um, want to search by using regular expression, yeah, it also supports it. Like this. So far, I have explained some kinds of useful features, including tracing or guider. There are uh, more useful features besides the ones I described. 
but I couldn't explain all of them because of time limitation. Uh, for specific details, uh, please refer to the readme file in guide or repository. And if you have any questions, yeah, please continue using email or GitHub. Yeah, thank you for your listening. Thank you. Thank you so very much for your presentation. I think there were a few questions as we were going through. Um, I believe, Steve, you had a couple of questions yourself. I don't know if you want to come on and participate here. There was a question about uh, locking mechanisms potentially being used at one point. Maybe you can get into that. Um, so they had a question about locking. I had a question about basically the kind of um, like the stack tracing. You said you added breakpoints. Did you add breakpoints to the executable to run, or how the, for the user space stack tracing? What did you use, or do you use perf? Uh, uh, Guider used uh, ptrace and uh, oh ptrace um, yeah installing uh, a breakpoint so as you what? know it's not good for performance but yeah right. it can yeah right. trace yeah it can trace uh, just calling uh, functions yeah because there's a lot of work being done I know perf has something I'm planning working stuff even in ftrace to be able to take a at least one k of uh, user space stack and throwing that into the ring buffer so that you can actually have something that can parse it later afterwards uh, right Whoa. from the kernel so Whoa. perf does that right now it's not yeah. it's slow because you're, to copy 1k from user space into kernels is a little yeah. bit slow but still much faster than trying to use ptrace uh Whoa. wait there was a locking i must have missed the locking question there yeah actually uh guiders target platform is very old ones. So uh, sometimes I cannot uh, rebuild the kernel and uh, get a source code for target programs. So yeah, Ptrace is yeah, very good for those uh, targets. Yeah. So the idea is to record the, just like I said, a binary blob of the stack data searching yeah. for pointers and such inside the stack data to find functions that match. Because usually when you have a call trace, there'll be uh, some sort of frame, you know, return address on how to get back, and that could be found. And what Perf does is to look at the like dwarf information of the executable. Mm -hmm. So when it sees an executable, it will just look at the dwarf information, and then it takes the binary blob and then figures it out. So it post processes the information. So um, this is something. Uh, please feel free to join like the Linux Trace Devel mailing list and such, and maybe we could find ways to. Utilize. I mean, it seems like a very uh, useful utility. You have a lot of features for it. Thank you very much. Um, the one, my main concern about it is the performance for it, how much overhead and everything takes. But so I think knowing and understanding, we're working on library infrastructure to be able to get access to all this information as well. So maybe that'd make it easier. And we have something called Trace Cruncher, which I think I asked you before to look at, that has, that is a uh, Python uh, interface to the tracing libraries, which yeah. might you might be able to utilize. Yeah. 